Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we're going to be counting down our top 10 3 to 4 player games. So these are multiplayer games that we really think play very well at 3 and 4 players. Uh, we had done a much older version of this list years ago with worse sound and such. Uh, and decided to do a update, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, see how much difference there is between the older version and the, and the new version for us. Uh, but at the very least, this will be a much better better quality version because it will not have the, the terrible sound and video quality of the much older version before we had our you know our high definition camera and our, our better microphone etc mm -hmm. okay um how is this list for you to make it is very easy yeah I, I found it pretty easy too i'm a little worried there's not going to be enough different there are a few differences for sure but there's not gonna be enough different from my original list but then again my original list like i said was I don't uh, even remember lower quality my original list said. I, there's definitely some on here that are going to be the same uh oh, but maybe not in the same positions but there are some new ones because there's some that definitely we we did not have yeah back when we made that old list yeah. for sure um, do you want to go first or second with these? I'll go first. Okay. All right. So without any further ado, I guess we're going to get right to our number 10s. Number 10. My number 10 is Anno 1800. Oh. And this is a a big um, sort of like... Can, like not really city building it's like a community you do do building. a bit of you, well it's drafting I mean, yeah it's you you draft tiles and then yeah. you put them on your board and it's like you have to you can only put them in certain spaces so yeah. you do need it's like so you it's like kind of village building <laughs> mm. um and then you can get extra boards and build on them and it's a little uh a little did you say a little bit of engine building too there's because, a little engine building because yeah. you have to get the cards there's also a actually... little worker placement yeah there's like a ton it's, going it's on it's a little bit of everything <laughs> yeah that's a you know this is one um i forgot it existed mm. might have made my list if i don't remember it existed great game uh yeah there's a lot going on a lot of euro game mechanics yeah. because there's very little interaction you're all building your own yeah, stuff the only I interaction think... is taking the things that someone else might want yeah the, that's the only interaction and you can actually well there's a thing where you can actually use um like the other players like if they have the ability to make beer you can use yeah use their thing you just got to give them you got to give them stuff yeah they, they get it. they get a little bonus for you using yeah. it basically um yeah could have made my list if i remembered it existed definitely was a possibility though my number 10 also has drafting in it okay. uh, my number 10 is carnival of monsters so carnival of monsters is a set collecting game where you are first collecting lands to then collect monsters and you're trying to have the most impressive carnival of monsters uh more valuable monsters are more expensive and require you to have more lands out first to to, to play, pay for them uh but also some of the more expensive monsters require you to have cages or hunt monster hunters to keep them in line or they could run amok and lose you points at the end of the round uh there's some press your luck mechanisms there's some dice rolling there's some set collecting there's some drafting and there's awesome monster artwork and this game is a lot of fun this is a really cool game and it's why carnival of monsters is my number 10. number nine my number nine is Kodama. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> did you forget I, that one existed? No, too? I uh, I didn't forget it existed. I'm just I think I'm a little surprised it's this high it, that it, it was high enough to make um, your top ten list. I was a little uh, it just caught me by surprise. Okay, uh, so it's a game where you are building a tree with like tree spirits in it, um, and it I guess yeah, there's drafting. Yeah, you do um, draft cards. Yeah. Um, Wow, we've got a lot of drafting on this list. Yeah, yeah. just realized that. And, and you gotta like, you gotta position the cards so that the branch looks like it's naturally yeah. growing. Yeah, so there's the last also branch. like um, placement. Yeah. Um, and then also you're collecting the stuff on the branches. You want branches yes. with specific items on them. Yeah, because you get points based on like, like so if 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 your there's main like, trunk of your tree, it's like stars is one and flowers and fireflies. Worms. Yeah, yeah, and, you. So you, you score based on one of the things that's been continuing across the most cards when you lay it mm -hmm. down. You can score up to a maximum of 10 points um, based on continuing those symbols. But if you push it too far, um, you can't score because you can't score more than 10 points. Yeah. 
Um, but then you also have like these hidden goal cards that are like, yeah. they could be all sorts of weird other things. Like it might say, have, you know, uh, lots of branches of all equal size. And the, more, and the more branches you have of equal size, the more points you're going to get at the end of the season mm-hmm. kind of thing. Now, this is a really fun game. We haven't played this one in a while, but we, we have played it a lot. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I definitely do enjoy it. Um, I just, I, you know what? I think because it hasn't hit the table in a little while, I, I was a little surprised that it was on your list. Okay. Um, anything else you want to say on Kodama? No. So my number nine is one that I am going to bet is going to be higher on your list. Okay. I'm betting this is going to be a crossover. Okay. It is the Guild of Merchant Explorers. Uh, this is a new entry to my list. Um, this is one that we've only discovered within the last year. Uh, but we both really liked. This is another Euro game. This is kind of like a, a root building game as well as um, a, a bit of a... Um, uh, God, what would you call the Guild of Merchant Explorers? It's strange. Like you, 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 you randomize the cards. You flip one up. It tells you where you can place cubes on your own map to build roots. Yeah, I would say root building. And filled areas, and, and filling areas allows you to place things that give you points. And there's a, there's a, it's like it's a total points out. There's like a, a million ways to get points mm-hmm. in this game. Filling an area lets you build a village, which gets you points. Connecting two cities lets you build a trade route, which gets you points. Uh, building on a tower lets you put a tower there, which gets you points. There's a ton of different ways to get points. And then um, one of my my favorite part of this game is there's a uh, Certain cards that come up that let you uh, draft a super powerful card that allows you to to do a unique placement of cubes. Mm-hmm. And you get to draft up to three of those. And each of them gets to be used at least once. Uh, some of them as much as four times throughout the course of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they really, really uh, make the game varied and cool. Plus the mm-hmm. game has like four different maps. Yes. Which also makes the game varied and cool. Uh, Guild of Merchant Explorers is a lot of fun. And that is why the Guild of Merchant Explorers is my number nine favorite three to four player game. Mm-hmm. And I think I had a diff- little bit different criteria because... This game is not on my list. Really? So my criteria was games that I only really like at three and four players. And since that game plays really well at two players, I was like, it doesn't fit the criteria for this list. At least my personal Your criteria. personal criteria. Yeah. I am shocked. See, with me, it was just that I really enjoy how it plays at three or four players. I didn't even consider how it played at two players because that's not what this list is there, about. There were a lot of games where I was like, oh, I like that game. Oh, but that plays really well at two players. I'm not going to put on this list. Interesting. No, then we definitely did our list a little yeah. bit different. Fair enough. Number eight. My number eight is Dastardly Dirigibles. Mm. And so this game, you are building a dirigible. Yes. Um, you use cards to build each segment. I don't recall how many segments there are. There's like six or seven. It's pretty big. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you need you need a tail and a nose and an engine. I think there's two and, engines. There's two, two yeah, engines. You yeah, you can have an engine, engine on both ends. And a gondola. Yeah. Um, and then you also have like a marketplace with um, cards that are not dirigible parts. Where you that, draft cards. Where you draft cards. <laughs> there's a lot of drafting in this list. Yeah, okay. <laughs> where you draft cards that can yeah. affect other things um, in the game. Uh, like you can swap, you can steal cards from other people's and dirigibles the, you, and things like that. You build dirigibles a couple times and what you're looking for is to either have uh, most of your, your dirigible belief from a single suit, which will get you a lot of points, or every once in a while when you wind up with a handful of like one card each from a million different suits, or, or you wind up with, maybe not in the hand, but cards available, one card each from different suits, you can sometimes go for the muddle and if yeah, it's you, one of each suit, but not no wild, wilds. no wild suit, because there, there's again, there's like six suits in a wild suit. Yeah. Uh, no, cool game. Uh, I, I wouldn't have this would not have made, made my list, but it is a very cool game. So my number eight favorite three to four player game is a bit of a worker placement slash tableau building game. It is Everdell. Uh, Everdell is phenomenal. I absolutely adore Everdell. It is one of my favorite worker placement games. Um, there's a lot of great resources to manage and use. You're you're doing the worker placement to buy buildings and also inhabit the buildings with animals. Uh, and there's some cool synergistic effects you get if you can match animals to buildings. 
Um, and, and the tableau building and the worker placement melds together seamlessly. This game is phenomenal. This game has made a lot of our lists because we love it. And while I'm not going to bet on this one being on yours, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Though I think this one can play fine at two players, so maybe, yeah. maybe also didn't make your list for the same reason. All right, well, but, <laughs> but Everdell is my number eight. Number seven. My number seven is Parade. Oh, this makes a lot of your list, yeah. yeah. Uh, Parade is a card game where it is Alice in Wonderland themed, yeah. and you are uh, you have the parade in front of you where there's, I think again, there's like five different suits. There's more than like a regular deck of card suits. I'd have to there's check. like I'm not five sure or many. six. Um, and you the parade is a draw by the yeah, way. Yeah, you lay you lay them you lay a certain amount out mm. and then you have to put a card at the end and depending on the color and the number of that card it um depends what that is and whether you need to take any cards from the cards in front of it and you want to at the end have the least amount of cards. You want to have the least amount of points worth yes. of cards because the thing is so when you, when you play a card the number on the card so if you play a 5 you count 5 cards you don't have to draft those. After those five cards, any card that matches the suit that you played or is equal to or less than your number, you'll have to draft. So if there's any five or less, you got to take it. And if that five you played is a, the Mad Hatter suit, any Mad Hatter cards you'd have to take after the first five. Um, and then uh, th basically the cards are, are worth a number of points mm -hmm. equal um, to their face value mm -hmm. unless you have the most of that suit, in which case you flip them face down, they're each only worth one point. Yes. And whoever has the least points wins. Mm -hmm. Great game. Great game. Definitely uh, love it. I'm not surprised that it's um, on your list because I know you love it too. Uh, so number seven, my number seven is Beyond the Sun. This is another definite new entry to my list here. Uh, Beyond the Sun is a game that we've only uh, added to the collection fairly recently, within the last maybe year and a half, mm -hmm. I think at the most. Uh, but th this is a really cool kind of worker placement tech tree building game with a uh, very minimum of player interaction, a lot of Euro-ish mechanics. There are some things that allow you to attack your opponent, but usually when we play it, we play it fairly passively. Mm -hmm. I have heard of other people actually playing it more aggressive with more player interaction. We just don't, we generally play it more passively. Yeah. But you can attack people. There are ways to, to do things that allow you to to inhibit uh, other people. And of course, as it being worker placement, you can take the spaces that your opponent mm -hmm. wants. But the building up of the tech tree slowly is is just very satisfying. Um, the game mechanics are very satisfying. And I love games of outer space themes. And for all of those reasons, Beyond the Sun is my number seven favorite three to four player game. Number six. My number six is Ship Shape. Oh, okay. And this is where you have a little cargo, a uh, little cargo container. Cargo ship, hold. Cargo hold. And, and um, the it usually has some bad stuff on there that you want to cover up. The rats. There's, there's rats on there. So you want to cover up the rats. And what you do is you bid on uh, cargo holds in the center that are stacked on top of each other. What? You bid... On draft order to draft yeah. cargo holds. Yeah. <laughs> we should have done a top ten drafting, guys. <laughs> we're, we're, we're halfway there. But yeah, you bid on you bid on on, on draft order for drafting cargo holds. Yeah, because each cargo hold um, has different. It's uh, the rats are in a different area on them, so no one has the same shape cargo hold basically and then the cargo holds are you tell them, tell them about the cutouts yeah and they're cut out so um it's like so difficult to like explain they've got but... it's a square and they'll have some areas where they'll have good things on it like like uh cannons contraband and money mm -hmm. and you want to you're looking down through the pile to try to figure out what order you want to go in because you want to draft the right ones that are going to cover up the bad things and show good things and the thing is like you want to have contraband but not the most because the person with the most loses all the points for contraband gold is worth points and then like cannons are worth their points minus the person with the least cannons points yeah. so like there's there's some weird play but basically you go through multiple rounds of this and want to have mm -hmm. the most points at the end of the game yeah. from all of your rounds of filling cargo holds it's also got a really cool like um, catch up mechanic where 
the people who have the most points get the hardest cargo holds with the most rats on them for the next mm -hmm. round, which is really cool. This is a very fun game. I like mm -hmm. this one a lot, definitely. Uh, this has been on a lot of both of our lists. Yeah. Um, what number was that? Was that six? It was six. My number six is an oldie but a goodie. This one's been in our collection for quite a while. Um, it hasn't hit the table in a while, but I want it to. Uh, usually the reason a lot of our games won't hit the table for a while is just because of all the review copies we get. But if we weren't getting all these review copies, this would be one I would be wanting to play a lot. It is Blood Rage. Blood Rage is an awesome area control game. It's up there as one of my favorite area control games. It has some very interesting mechanics because you are, you're playing out the Vikings fighting each other during the Ragnarok. And slowly the world gets destroyed and you can earn points for losing your own guys and having them die and go to Valhalla um, in interesting ways. So there's points you get for killing opponents, but there's also points you get for killing your own guys. And the Loki strategy is 100% based around killing your own guys for points, which is fun, <laughs> and I always enjoy that. I like going for that. Plus, there's lots of cool monsters. You, In addition to having Vikings, you can get trolls and sea monsters and things like that, which can also be really awesome and help you out for fighting over the different realms around the tree Yggdrasil. Uh, Blood Rage is definitely one of my favorite area control games of all time, and it is why, at three or four players, I absolutely adored and why it made it all the way down to my number six favorite three to four player game. Number five. My number five mm. is Scattergories. <laughs> what? No, I just, I, it <laughs> amuses me how often this, this game that dates all the way back to the 1980s makes... <laughs> makes a list it's still it's it... a classic for a reason i agree go on talk <laughs> about it so i mean if you don't know what categories is mm. <laughs> you have a die where you roll the die and it's got uh, a letter a letter on it it's like a 20-sided die um they and... basically don't have the six least used letters to start words in the english language on it yes basically. and then you have a list and it'll be like things in this room things that are around uh you know a list of just very generic things and categories you... categories and you need to write uh use that letter and write something that coincides with each category starting with that letter and you do it three times, and you got three mini winners of each round, and then you have a a, a grand winner who had the most points over the three rounds. Mm -hmm. Is that basically? Yeah. And then there's also, uh, but when 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 reading out the answers, if two people pick the same answer, they cancel out and they get no points. And if you pick an answer uh, without having adjectives but has multiple words that start with the same letter, you actually get multiple points. Mm -hmm. So it it can't be you can't say something like like big. Like a big yeah, but boy. Like if it, if it's like, you know, something in a zoo, you could say brown bear because right. that's like the technical name of a bear. And for B, that would give you two points. You know, I as mean, long as no one is, else said bear yeah. or brown bear yeah. because then you would can't, you'd cancel each other out. But you couldn't say big bear. Yeah. But brown bear works because there is brown bear is a type or of bear. Black bear you or know? black bear. And that's the thing. If you did black bear and I did brown bear, those are different. Mm -hmm. So those wouldn't cancel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very cool game. Uh, I, I do agree. It does hold up. Um, so, yeah. So, that was your number five, yes? Yes. My number five is a engine building game with asymmetrical player powers as well as sort of a world building mechanic. And it is Terraforming Mars. This is a game that I have absolutely adored since I got it. Um, it's a number of years old now, but it's got some great engine building, some great resource management. And, and you are playing to in a almost semi-cooperative way terraform the planet mars because you're playing until there's enough oceans on mars and you get the heat up to a certain level and such you got to get these certain parameters that that mean that mars is terraformed but in reality it is actually a competitive game because the person who has earned the most points along the way wins the game of terraforming mars it's just that you're all working towards this cooperative objective of terraforming mars uh, but the person who has contributed the most winds up basically with the most points at the end. Uh, Terraforming Mars is awesome and a ton of fun. Um, and that is why it is my number five favorite three to four player game. Number four. My number four is Baron Park. Oh. And you are building a bear park. You are um, drafting. 
<laughs> drafting little tiles that are shaped like uh, Tetris Tetris tiles. Polyominoes. And um, putting them on your park, and you have to maneuver them around so they all they cover the entire park. Um, and you got to cover the symbols. Yeah, you cover you cover the symbols to get more stuff, and then there's a certain symbol that you cover where you can add on to your park when you cover that. Because you can get up to four boards, and then you have yeah. you have to cover if you the first person to cover all four boards triggers the end. Yes. And then you you earn points basically um, for it's drafting only, early. Yes, because it's each um, each tile has a number on it, and it goes from highest to lowest. So the, the quicker you go, the earlier you draft particular tiles, the more valuable they are. And then there are some unique tiles that are really big and cover a lot mm -hmm. of space. And those are always very valuable. Uh, Baron Park is a great game. Um, didn't quite make my list. Um, only because there are so many games that are three or four players. But this mm -hmm. is a phenomenal game. I thoroughly agree with it being on your list. Uh, so that was your number four, yes? Yes. My number four. Four is a Euro-ish game um, that I do not believe is in print right now, but I absolutely adore it. Uh, it has so many wonderful mechanics. It is Patrician. So Patrician is a game where you are building towers in cities in Italy, um, and you play a card which lets you build a level on a tower, and sometimes gives you other effects as well. Like you're also collecting portraits from the cards. Some of the cards have portraits on them. Uh, you want to collect sets of three portraits of the same portrait. Some of them will have two portraits. Others have effects that allow you to move the top of a tower from one tower in that city to the other because each city has two towers. But it, once a city's number of levels are complete, each city has a certain number of levels based on the deck of cards that will be built amongst those two towers there. Once they're complete, whoever has the most levels in a tower gets the points for that tower. Um... If there's a tie, the person with the highest level in the tower gets the points for that tower. And then there are bonus points for having sets of three portraits of the same type of portrait. There's three different kinds of portraits. And whoever has the highest points wins. It's actually a very easy game to learn and teach, but I find it endlessly enjoyable. Mm -hmm. This is a game that, um, for me, uh, has really like punched above its weight. Because it, it continues to hit the table so many years later. I want to say we bought this one in like 2012, 2013, somewhere around there, and it still hits the table. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I think it, I think it was I think it was around there. But yeah, and that's why Patrician is my number four favorite three to four player game. Number three. My number three is Mysterium. Okay, I, I I was expecting this to be on your list. Yeah, so you are, um, it's a cooperative game where one person is a ghost who cannot speak and can only communicate through these tarot cards um, that just have crazy pictures on them. Yeah. And then the other players are psychics and they're trying to figure out what the ghost is trying to tell them with the cards. Yeah, uh, and, and you're trying to, from, yeah, you're trying... from the hints, you're trying to get a, a person, a place, and a thing that had to do mm -hmm. with the death of the ghost. Um, and it is cooperative, so the, the psychics can help each other out. Mm -hmm. Until the very end, there's a, there's a portion where they have to play it silently, yeah. but the ghost has to keep silent. Uh, Patrician is great. No, um, Mysterium. Oh, Mysterium. I'm, Patrician. I'm still on Patrician. <laughs> Mysterium is great. It, it, this is one that almost made my list. Um, anything else you want to say about Mysterium before we move on to my no. number uh, three here? No. My number three is Wasteland Express Delivery Service. This is a pick up and deliver game where you also have to fight, fight off raiders in the post-apocalypse. You can think of it as being a board game version of um, uh, the second Mad Max movie, which depending on what country you're in, might either be Mad Max 2 or The Road Warrior, uh, or the fourth Mad Max game, uh, Mad Max Fury Road, uh, which also, of course, has that sort of uh, moving, uh, driving a truck around with lots of resources on it around the wasteland. Uh, but, it, you know, different resources because the, the, um, the resources they had on the truck in, in that one was like, like milk. And of course there were people on it. Uh, though I don't like to call people resources. Uh, but in, in, whereas in the, um, specifically in the second Mad Max movie in the Road Warrior or Mad Max 2, it was gasoline. But in both cases, you're fighting off raiders, of course, and trying to, to, to move goods throughout 
the wasteland, this is a similar kind of thing, except the whole game is just based around that. You're literally moving goods from place to place, picking up and delivering, selling items, trying to uh, run a decent business. The game is a ton of fun. Um, the mechanics are a lot of fun. The fighting of the raiders is fun. The resource management and the, and the altering of the market because the value of the different things fluctuates up and down. Um, the artwork is amazingly characterful and enjoyable. Wasteland Express Delivery Service is my number three favorite three to four player game. Any thoughts on Wasteland Express? It's fun. Okay. It's on my list. Number two. My number two is Lords of Vegas. I should have known this would be on your list, but I didn't think it would. I, 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 it, it, there were certain games on your list that did occur to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Lynn's going to put that on her list. But this didn't occur to me for some reason. But yeah, I know you do love this game. Yeah, so you are building a casino, casino or, mm -hmm. in, or casinos, multiple casinos. Yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, you want to be on the Las Vegas Strip, but some of them are off Strip. Yes. And they matter too, yes. just not as much as the ones on Strip because they're worth more money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because when the strip pays, yeah, you know, absolutely, absolutely. So you, yeah, you're you're building up your casinos and you're trying to buy uh, um, empty properties and develop them and develop them and hostily taking over <laughs> other people's casinos. That part's great. I love that part. <laughs> um yeah lords of vegas is is a really cool really cool game um i saw it's back in print actually a smaller company has picked up the rights is printing mm -hmm. it again lords of vegas is a really cool game with a, a lot didn't of didn't they rename it no it's still called oh, lords okay. of vegas it's just a smaller company picked okay. up the rights and is, is doing it now must have bought it off because i think um the rights are currently owned by asmody but um uh must have they must have uh licensed. rented them licensed them that's the word i'm looking for yeah licensed them out but yeah, fantastic game. Love Lords of Vegas. Really, really good game. Uh, anything else you want to say on Lords of Vegas for your number two there? No. So my number two is, I'm just checking here. I think it's the oldest game on my list. Okay. Uh, because this one, we originally played the original version with a slightly different name way, way back in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. This is Catan Starfarers, formerly called Starfarers of Catan. Uh, this is my favorite version of Catan. This is one of my favorite um like economic style games it is one of my favorite three to four player games it is a phenomenal game where you colonize worlds you 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 go out you encounter pirates and merchants and and buy technologies and send your ships out to colonize different planets uh to gain new resources to build new ships and you know you want to have uh the most successful get the most points uh for doing all of this which you get points for making space stations for uh, doing certain other things throughout the game. You want to get the most points the quickest. Killing, killing pirates. Killing pirates, things like that. Because you do fight off pirates. Mm -hmm. um, terraforming is, planets. Terraforming planets. It is amazingly fun. This is an amazingly fun game. Um, Catan Starfarers is my number two favorite three to four player game. Okay. Anything you want to say on Catan Starfarers? No, it's fun. It's not on my list. Really? Yeah. I was thinking it was about to be a crossover. Oh, really? Yeah, I guess not. And yeah. now it is time for number one. <laughs> it's a game on my list that's number one that you always complain that I work it into every list as my number one. I know what it is then. I, well, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I know uh -huh. what your, your, your favorite three to four player game is. Because it won't be, it won't be Tales of the Arabian Nights because you love it at two players. Mm -hmm. It will be Bill and Ted's Excellent Board Game. Yes. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Board Game is my number one three and four player game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you do work that into a lot of lists. I do. So it's a programming game. Mm -hmm. So you program where your character, where your phone booth is moving. Yes. Um, before... Um, you know, at the same time as everyone else, and then you flip it over, and then the person with the lowest number moves first. But yeah, the lowest number card, yeah. But then their cards also move the bad dudes. Yes. So depending on where, if you don't go first and the bad dudes move, they could completely mess up your entire turn. Yeah, it becomes very brain burning because if, you, if uh, you're trying to go around the board and pick up the historical figures for the history presentation but if you if you and 
if you've ever seen Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you know what I'm talking about. This the entire plot of the of the movie is is them going around and picking up historical figures for the history presentation at school. But um, if you run into a bad dude, an evil dude, or the evil dude runs into you, you drop one of uh, your most recently collected mm -hmm. figure. But the the historical figures that you get once you get them, they flip over and become part of the programming as well. Yes, they have moves on them that you have to add on to the beginning of your move. So you do them first, and then you do your two cards. It is a surprisingly brain burning game for a game based on Bill and Ted's Excellent mm -hmm. Adventure. Uh, it's actually a really fun game. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Anything else you want to say on that? No. Okay, so my number one, and since I guessed yours, would you like to guess my favorite three to four player game? Because I think it's, it wouldn't be that hard for you. Twilight Imperium? Of course it's Twilight Imperium. <laughs> Twilight Imperium 4th Edition is my number one favorite three to four player game because it is the most epic, the most amazingly involved, complex, largest number of asymmetrical player power factions in a board game that I've ever played, uh, all of that together, making this game where you control an entire civilization and go about trying to outmaneuver your opponents militarily, politically, economically, to become the new rulers of the known universe. Uh, Twilight Imperium has been one of my favorite games of all time since 3rd edition. 4th edition surpassed it and um, really, really ironed out some of the rules that had minor issues from 3rd edition. And it's 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 just really phenomenal. And since they came out with the expansion for fourth edition, Prophecy of Kings, which added in um, even more cool variety, even more factions, plus you know the um, the max and the leaders and everything again, which the leaders are great. I love the leaders. It has hundred percent concreted itself as my favorite game to play with three or four players. Though of course you do need a day set aside to do it because it's a mm -hmm. minimum of six hours of play for one game of Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Thoughts on on TI4? I like it. We didn't have, you know, we agreed with a lot of each other's choices, but we didn't have any crossover. No, we didn't. There was literally, I just realized I, that. Because I gave myself secret criteria. <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? What, this is not, I was, you, when you started talking about that earlier, when you're saying, you know, I didn't want to pick anything that was good at two players. I'm like, that had nothing to do with what we were saying. This list was supposed to be about. I'm like, what? Yeah, you gave yourself secret criteria. I had no idea. Uh, there you have it. Uh, that is our top tens. Um, be sure to check out my links in the description down below to BoardGameCaptain.com and my Teespring store, as well as my Patreon. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain Spell the K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on. That you draft and you're looking to try to get the best carnival of monsters put together in a set collecting way. Where's our oh, little monster? He's, yeah, he's a little monster. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you need a monster? I heard you needed a monster. He's like, I heard you needed oh oh it's a little monster. It's a little monster. Am I going to have to do that all again? Am I going to have to do that again? What are you doing, silly? What are you doing, silly? Let, da let Daddy do his list with Mommy, okay? I'm going to make your ears go flippity-flappity. Flippity-flappity ears. <laughs> okay, you go down on the floor.